Hi everyone, this is Sue Doyle. Um, I'm an occupational therapist with 40 years of experience and um, I have been running a home modifications um, practice for the last um, five, six years and also the developer of the Home Accessibility and Safety Therapist um, certification course. And I get a lot of questions about do OTs need to bill Medicare for home modifications? So I thought I'd do a little video here just to give you some brief information. We go over more details in the certification course, but this is kind of an introduction to help you out. So when you're looking at answering that question, there are several things that we need to take into account, and we'll look a little bit at them as we go along. The first one is the Safe Practice Acts, um, AOT legal guidance, and Medicare um, regulations. So let's look at this. So um, when we look at it, most state practice acts outline uh, that home assessments are a pivotal part of OT practice. For example, the Washington State Practice Act talks about um, adapting the environments for individuals with disabilities, includes assessing the needs, identifying strategies, implementing um, training, and evaluating the outcomes. And so very clearly it's stated in there. Um, but check on your um, state practice act because this is really guiding. This is outlining that you're practicing occupational therapy when you look at adapting environments for individuals with disabilities. And so that's a key role for us as occupational therapists. Next, we're going to look at um, legal guidance provided by AOTA. And in reality, um, this happened, I presented at AOTA about um, Medicare covering um, the home um, assessments. And so they paid an attorney for six months to study the situation. The reference point is in the bottom of the slide here. You can Google it by looking at home modifications um, on the Medicare AOTA. It'll come up for you. But basically, there are several uh, scenarios, or three scenarios that they um, presented. And we'll just briefly go over those. The first one is that an OT um, evaluation that's covered by Medicare comes from a change in the medical condition, impacts the ability to manage the constraints of the environment on functional performance um, in the home, looking at basic self-care and basic instrumental ADLs. In being with that, you can institute a treatment plan that looks at goals for safe access, safe transfers, safe performing the tasks in that environment. So as we look at that, you're going to see that um, there definitely is a role for occupational therapy and that that's covered under the Medicare regulations. There's then the gray area, right? And this is an area to think about. But the beneficiary has a long-standing diagnosis. For example, they recovered from a stroke a year ago. The diagnosis is not impacting their current ability to function safely in the home. In preventative measures for further aging versus a skilled plan of care is really the goal. Um, this person generally doesn't come with a uh, referral from a physician or a case manager. Um, and you need to decide whether it's appropriate or not using your clinical judgment to go Medicare. I have to say, generally speaking, a lot of my clients would benefit from a plan of care in this situation. And often, the physicians have no problems. Um, I reach out to them to look at um, having OT implement a plan of care. They're not aware that that's an option for them there. The first one um, definitely either comes with a Medicare plan of care or a Medicare, oh, sorry, a medical referral, and you set up a medical, medical plan of care, or you request one because you identify that this is a client where it will meet that situation. Now, the not covered situations are fairly clear in the outline um, that AOTA's attorney put together. This is kind of aging in place. Right, so this is someone who um, is retiring, building a new home, and they want you to give them advice. Well, they're remodeling the home and they lost the advice in there. Um, this is also where you could be a build, working with a builder. 
or the beneficiary is not able to be present. So you're assessing the environment only. And this has happened to me in a few situations where the client's in skilled nursing or in a hospital, they can't get out and come to the environment that you're assessing. Uh, you also can't bill while they're receiving Prop A services in the hospital. And um, you're purely assessing the environment. You are not in this situation assessing the client, doing an eval on the client at all. This is just assessing the environment and some of the knowledge you may have been given. And um, this one's a clearly not covered situation. So being aware, there are three scenarios. There's one where they're definitely covered. There's one where there's definitely not. And there's that great area in between where you use your clinical judgment. And I find that, you know, often I'm seeing that these clients are reaching out um, because it really is impairing some of their basic self-care and safety. And this would be a covered situation. But again, being aware of what that looks like. If it would be a covered situation, requesting or um, contacting with a physician that may sign your plan of care so that you're all working as a team to provide the best options for this client. Now, the next question is, well, I only want to be a cash therapist. Well, the issue is when you're looking at those clients that are on that covered area, you can't opt out. In fact, you have to then um, provide them the benefits that they're entitled to under the Medicare system. So, for example, you can see physicians that can opt out. Some of those are midwives, psychologists, social workers, dietitians, um, physicians, um, dental physicians, podiatrists, right? Um, even optometry can opt out of the Medicare system. But for those of us that are chiropractors, um, anesthesiologists, assistants, speech therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, we cannot opt out of Medicare. So we can't say, oh, well, I'm not participating um, in Medicare, so I'm still going to go to cash. That's not an option. And um, as you can see here, that in the Medicare policy, uh, benefit policy manual in Chapter 15, um, there is that thing about covered medical services. It says physical therapists in independent practice and occupational therapists in independent practice cannot opt out because they are not within the opt out laws definition of a physician or a practitioner. So it's really clear we do not have the option of opting out of the responsibilities of um, providing services to Medicare beneficiaries for cash. So then the other piece of this is that you can't charge the client and then give them a super bill to submit to Medicare. Um, that is not an option that's available. In fact, when you look at this, um, the Social Security Act, Section 1848G4, requires that you submit claims for all your Medicare patients for the services rendered. That's you submit claims. The requirement applies to all physicians and suppliers who provide covered services. Provide covered services at games, and we've talked about the services that are covered. The provider may not charge the clients for preparing or filing a Medicare claim, and the requirement to submit the claim does not mean that you must submit, submit oops, um, accept assignments. Now, I hear people say, well, I'm not participating, I'm not participating. So, your credentials with Medicare and enrolled with Medicare as a provider, and you can enroll as either participating or non participating. Participating accepts assignment, which means the payment comes to you and you have a slightly lower rate, but it's easier for the client and everyone else. There's some issues around that. I would recommend that you join Apple and Matt Tyler's um, class on building Medicare. Uh, called Learning Medicare Billing, um, join his group um, for um, Medicare for OTs and PTs on Facebook and answer those questions there. But that's not the purpose of this video. 
but compliance of the claims um, mandatory filing requirements is really key because here it's monitored um, in violations um, come with a civil penalty. In fact, $2,000 for each violation and you could then be excluded from um, being able to provide medic services to Medicare beneficiaries. And so that then moves you away from a whole lot of your market. So just thinking again about you know, the implications of doing that, we all want it to be cash pay, but there are certain regulations that really impact what we're able to do. So in conclusion, the key things are, Home safety and accessibility assessments are an integral part of occupational therapy practice. They're defined in most um, OT practice laws. There are definitely situations in which this is a Medicare public service and you need to have clear guidelines about deciding which is and which isn't. And when um, the situation is where that, that's covered service, we're legally required to bill Medicare for those services. And you need to have clear guidelines so that you're able to follow those consistently. And I just want to let you know that, you know, Next Level OT Therapy Business Builder program um, helps you get started on being able to build Medicare and get your business set up. We also have our Home Accessibility and Safety Therapy Certification Program, which goes to all the guidelines on how to develop um, your practice for home modifications, when to bill, not to bill, how to do that, how to write reports, all of those kinds of things to help you be really time effective and efficient in your practice. So just a little brief message here to let you know um, how that works. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.